Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another Animal Crossing video. Today, I'm going to be teaching you nine ways that you are very likely playing Animal Crossing New Horizons wrong. Yeah, I said it. You're playing it wrong. Probably. Maybe maybe you're better at the game than me, but maybe maybe you're making at least one mistake on this list. But don't worry, it's okay. Everybody makes mistakes. Mistakes are inevitable. Just look at my very existence, right? Now, we're going to start with one that almost everybody does. I see this all the time. And this is when you're actually time traveling. So if you don't time travel, this might not apply to you. But if you were to actually press the minus button and try to wrap things up for now, most people would save and end. You would go through this whole thing. And then at this point, save complete, see you later, people would press A. That's where you're wrong, okay? So when you see this where it says save complete, you were safe to press the home button and now actually change the time and date right here. Because every single time, that you actually change the time and date in the game and reboot it, it will take a long time to boot up. But let's say I make it to April 11th, okay, 2022, and let's make it at 7 a.m. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to Animal Crossing, and now I'm gonna press A. And there we go, we're back in the game, and as you can see now, it is the next day according to Isabel. And if I stop moving for a second, right there, April 11th, 7.49 a.m. That whole process took about one minute to save and exit. And if you were to actually press the home button, press X, and then close it, reboot it, it would take significantly longer. Try it for yourself. All right, have you ever been remodeling your island and noticed you have to dig up like, I don't know, 10 trees? So you go and find your favorite fruit or least favorite because you're gonna get rid of it, I guess, and you actually eat 10 of them and then dig up 10 trees. Well, I'm here to tell you that you're doing that wrong. You could actually just go to Daisy May, buy one stack of turnips, eat them, and there you go. Instead of eating 10 individual fruits, you can instantly get 10 digs or 10 power-ups or however you want to call it. However, if you accidentally eat too many, then you can actually, <laughs> believe it or not, you can go to the bathroom. It's a work in progress. Okay, don't don't judge me. I haven't I haven't decorated this. But you can go to your your golden throne and watch it as they disappear. <laughs> and that takes care of that. So yeah, that's that's one way to get rid of them. <laughs> For the next tip, if you are actually typing things in game like this, hello. Yeah, that don't do that. that. That's playing the game wrong as far as I'm concerned. What you should do, you can actually use the official Nintendo app to type in-game so much quicker than if you were to be using the actual in-game chat box option for those times that you're actually online with people you might not know. You might be visiting uh, somebody else's island to do a little bit of a trade or getting a villager from them that's in boxes. So with this, you go to the official Nintendo app like you see right there, click Animal Crossing, and now there's a lot of really cool things in here. And right there, you can see keyboards. If you tap that, you actually get a cute little <laughs> keyboard here which is your default one but what you can it's not really that cute I don't know why I said that but you can actually just type like this hey this is me chase typing on my phone instead of in oh it was too long instead of typing in game and you also get to benefit from autocorrect so yeah, this is one that I see a lot of people making the mistake of, and I just want to help them. Hey, short chase here, reminding you to <laughs> subscribe if you're <laughs> subscribe if you do any of these things wrong, and uh, if you learned something from the video, it really helps me out. And um, of course, give it a thumbs up and engage with the video through comments if you want to help me out in the algorithm. Anyway, guys, back <laughs> love this filter. Back to the video. Okay, okay. How about this one? Have you ever been watching a streamer or somebody where something really cool happens and the creator does something like this and zooms in? Like maybe they just see Molly and Molly looks so cute and you just want to zoom in on that and get get some really good action without actually pulling up your camera, going like this, boom, and zooming in. See, I, I can't even fully get the moment, but oh, you know what? Molly's going to join us for the rest of this clip. <laughs> anyway, let's, let's say hello. Hey, hey, didn't even wave back. That's okay. So simply press the home button, go all the way to your settings. Hold that down button and go all the way to the bottom of the system, press A, ignore everything else, and then right down here where it says zoom, 
make sure you change that to on and it says how you do it right there you can zoom in by pressing the home button twice quickly so you can do that really quick and bring attention to anything you want and you can zoom in with x you can zoom in on zoom or you can zoom out on zoom and uh yeah it allows you to do really cool things that you normally can't so this is something that a lot of streamers do and uh, a lot of people ask questions about and even though i have this framed up perfectly i can still zoom in yet again and get an even better shot right there on molly hey molly Look, I know what you're thinking. You probably already knew that last one somehow. And if you did know that one, maybe you don't know this one, okay? So when you use your tools, they all have a durability. But did you know that this durability can be reset if instead of just letting it break, you were to just customize it? Yeah, when you customize items, you can actually reset the amount of charges or uses on that item so it can last a lot longer rather than you have to keep throwing them out this is just i guess better for the animal crossing environment you know you maybe maybe don't do it because it's a good tip maybe do it because you care about the environment or something how about this one this is one that i see everybody making all the time when you are doing villager hunting you should never ever take your ladder with you because your ladder actually will allow the game to spawn in cliffs when you visit islands now why is that a problem when you go to let's say a hundred islands and use a hundred nook mile tickets to go and find your dreamy it can increase the time so much more i know it might only be an extra i don't know 15 20 seconds each time to climb up that mountain and climb back down to see what villager you got however when you do that a hundred times you are saving so much time so yeah if you don't bring your ladder with you when you go and visit these islands it will only spawn flat islands which means all you need in your hand is your trusty vaulting pole yeah no more ladders needed at all for example here you go you have this completely flat island I can run over here and instantly see what the villager is. If there was a villager, my island's full. Oops, <laughs> bad example for the clip. There's supposed to be a villager there, okay? And then you can leave right away. Some islands, you literally come to here, see the villager, and you can leave right away. It's so much quicker. And for one way that people play the game wrong, and it isn't necessarily wrong, but you really would benefit from not playing it alone. Now this game has a beautiful community. If you're watching my videos, this comment section right below is already one of those communities. Look at every single person in there. They're all part of it. So why not go and say hello? Now, if you really want to play the game alone, you absolutely can, but there are so many things in this game that are so much better when they're shared. How about your completed island's dream address or pictures of little areas you've made? There's tons of places to do that. And trade items. What if you have a really dreamy villager in boxes and will it just go to the void? Oh no, not the void. Well, you can give it to someone who would really love that villager and you can do that in my Discord. It is a beautiful place to meet a ton of friends. You can introduce yourself here, post a little pic of your puppy here, or maybe some island progress, trade some villagers. As you can see, the list is very long. Go and check it in the description or type in the URL right here and come join the beautiful community. Not to mention, there's also the beautiful Twitter community, which can be a little bit crazy at times, <coughs> space buns. But other than that, it's beautiful. And then there's Instagram, of course, and Reddit, and so many more that I probably don't know about, but go and check those out. Don't just play this game alone. Make some friends, get involved in the community, and you will make some friends. Can't wait to see you. All right, for the next tip, we're gonna be talking about these glowing money spots. Now. Everybody knows that if you bury 10,000 bells in here, when it fully grows, there will be three, I guess, money fruit or money bags on the tree to give you 30,000 bells. And some people also know that if you bury even more bells, let's say 20,000 bells on certain days that are called fertile days, it will actually turn into 60,000 bells. And this goes all the way up to 99,000 bells. You will get, what is that, 297,000 bells back only on the fertile days. However, if it is not a fertile day, it will only give you 10,000 bells each bag. So a total of 30,000. So you'd make a huge loss if you were to gamble like that. Some people have some theories saying to put, now maybe you put 30,000 bells in it because if you fail, you'll get that 30,000 bells back. And if you succeed, you'll get 90,000. Wouldn't that work out? I'm here to tell you that if you do anything other than 10,000 bells in these spots, you're just playing Animal Crossing wrong. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> I'm so brutal. Uh, yeah, it actually mathematically does not work out. If you bury any more than 10,000 bells based on any of these myths, you're actually losing out on a lot of money per day. But you could also just gamble and uh, put 99,000 bells in there and see what happens. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you're going to lose money. This is one that honestly, almost everyone does. Everyone does this and it's mind blowing. But this game is Animal Crossing. This isn't a competitive game. So why do we keep turning it into that? So the final tip, number nine, the ninth reason why you're playing this game wrong is that you're making it a competition and you're going too quick. You're rushing and comparing your island to everybody else's. Me, look, look at my island. I like my island being simple. Straight lines, very simple, easy to run around in, and it's not very cluttered with this beautiful design. It's very simple. And that's how I like it. But when I go and look at some of the comments, some people say, oh, my island's very boring or sparse. Or I compare myself to one of the many gorgeous, gorgeous islands that I visit myself on my own channel. I'm a part of the problem. I show you guys some of the most beautiful islands. And if you're comparing yourself and your island to all these other beautiful islands, then you're playing the game wrong. Like the game isn't a competition, but we keep comparing ourselves to other people. So then it turns into that. And so you should just take the game at your own pace, design how you want, put the items on your island and whatever you want, exactly how you want it. If you don't want to spend a ton of time stressing over each and every last bit of your island, don't do that because you know, the people you're comparing yourself to genuinely enjoyed doing it every single second they probably enjoyed. And that's why they did it. And if you don't enjoy it, if you just enjoy logging in, talking to your villagers every day, and then logging out after 10 minutes of play, you're playing the game right. And also, if you want to design your island crazy and then submit it to me for me to do a tour on it, you're also playing the game right. As long as it's the way that you want to do it. This game isn't meant to be rushed. It's meant to be enjoyed. So I want you guys to finish this video and go and enjoy it. Just, just go and enjoy it.